NBC Sports, and the United States Golf Association are proud to present a national championship. Today it's live final round coverage of the 64th United States Women's Open. A spectacular championship Sunday in the lush rolling hills of eastern Pennsylvania. The old course at Saucon Valley Country Club, an ode to the past. When classic courses just seem to meld into the natural beauty of the landscape, no other state has hosted more USGA championships than Pennsylvania, which also today will crown a record seventh U.S. Women's Open champion. But it will be the very first time that the greatest title in all of women's golf will be decided at Saucon Valley. And this is shaping up to be some back nine. The course has been shortened. That back nine is somewhat vulnerable. We've seen a couple of 32s already on the back nine. So can they put even more pressure on Christy Kerr? The lead just won. Candy Kung, Yoon Hee Ji at plus one, a single shot behind. Then you've got Kim at plus two. Suzanne Pedersen, long hitter, still has that back nine left at plus four. So he gets you out to G live at the par four seventh with her third, playing with Kerr. Knows right where she stands. Just a single shot back. Roger Malpe in this final group. Bunker shot just a bit of a ridge and start to work away from her son, but she's caught that heavy. And we've got Dottie Pepper, Johnny Miller, our entire NBC golf crew here. Happy to bring you the most prestigious event in women's golf and there is Suzanne Pedersen and uh, Gary uh, there's the kind of golfer that can put some heat on the leaders especially on this back nine playing the shortest it has all week Dan no question about it she has made nine consecutive pars to this point went for the green here at the short par four tenth uh, just 242 yards in length today put it in that green side bunker you see on the right side of your screen Splashed it out to here, but uh, yeah, she's got the length to reach 12 and 2. She's got the length to drive it on the green at 15. Important putt for her here, Kay, I would think. Certainly got to get it going very quickly on this back nine and apply pressure. Uphill putt that should move a little right to left. Oh, Just hung right at the last. Looked like it was going to turn right in there. Back to seven. And Christy Kerr, again, Roger, coming off back to back bogeys and three bogeys in the first now, six holes, asking for things to quiet down. But there's a look at her uh, cart. Certainly shaky, Roger, compared to what we've seen from her in the first three days. Yes, but coming off the, the bogey at six, I will say, made two very good swings here uh, at seven. Uh, shot from 200 yards now has left her about you know, 18 feet just over. But the, the, We'll move a little bit from right to left. But you're right, a shaky start, certainly bogey at the first par five, not the kind of start you want to get off to. Actually, the second time she's made a six there at that opening hole this week. Led by three just a couple of holes ago and now leads by one. Great. Right. Oh. That'll be a tap in par to remain at even. And back to 10. And this just a moment ago, Brittany Lincecum's second shot. She hit a three wood to this position. In the green side bunker. Utilizes the slope in the green nicely. Has it back within a couple of feet of the hole. She likes that one. And now live, the birdie attempt to get the plus four. And another player with the length to take advantage of some of these shortened tees on this back nine here at the old course at Socket Valley Country Club as we go to the ninth. And this is a 221 yard par three. Candy Kong tied for second right now. Tough par three playing into that north wind. And that's a super good shot. I say so. That is a super shot. Hung began the championship with 22 consecutive pars, and now she is on a great birdie run. Over at the seventh, we've got G for par. Now has been in three bunkers today, and O for three in getting the ball up and in. So G, who got closer with that birdie at the sixth and had that two-shot swing in her favor, still not in for bogey. 
Jordan Heejee, just five feet, four inches, but the 20th ranked golfer in the world, 23 years old. Got a gorgeous swing and hits a high fade, which is a very rare shot on the LPGA Tour. Uh, number one in greens hit this week, so she is striping the ball and uh, just sand play is letting her down a little today. Picked up her first LPGA Tour win and only win last year at Rochester. So G gives one back and is at plus two. And back over to the ninth and just to finish off Candy Kung's birdie run here didn't make a birdie in her first 41 holes has now made eight birdies in her last 21 holes five under in that stretch in that Dottie is how you move up the leaderboard in a hurry here at Saucon Valley. Well and she took advantage of a day yesterday where the scoring was better than we'd seen Thursday and Friday but was by no means an easy day. Uh, the winds were the first they'd played in really all week long and difficult hole locations yesterday. She was very aggressive on the few holes that I watched her play. Jane Crafter with this uh, group. Candy hit five wood off the tee and uh, what a beautiful shot it is. Just uh, was able to get it up on this top level. I'd say about 12 feet uphill. Not a lot of break in this part. May want to go just a little bit left at the end, but certainly one that she can be aggressive with. And a player that already has a USGA title to her credit won the women's amateur public links. And another one not born in the U.S. born in Taiwan grew up in Southern California went to USC but Christy Kerr on top with an American flag next to her name and a slew of international players in chase. Straight. That was as straight as they come. Did not do a thing. Back to the par four eight. And it's a dog leg left. Par four. The tees have been moved up some 15 yards today. A hole now playing at 372 yards. And Roger, the intent was to entice the players to uh, maybe try to carry this uh, fairway bunker down the left hand side. As we can see, a draw is the preferred shot shape. Well, Christy had to drive her out and uh, elected against that. Now has a three without, I would imagine. And from this forward tee hole, as you said, measuring 372 yards today, the bunkers through the fairway uh, potentially in play as wind is kind of helping and from left to right it feels. Very traditional golf bag for Christy, a driver, a three wood, a five wood, and a seven Good. wood. No hybrids. This one is pulled left, left of the bunker. Well, it gets over that bunker, but now it's a matter of the lie in the primary cut of rough. Well, Christy Kerr, uh, clearly the most solid, most consistent golfer through three rounds, but today with three bogeys in the first six holes is feeling the heat and trying to win her second U.S. Women's Open title in the last three years. And Dottie and Johnny uh, Kerr and everybody else woke up to the headlines here today in the morning paper. Can she hang on? And that seems to be the question, especially now, as that lead is now just one. Dottie, I'll start with you. What do you think? Well, I think we visit back two years ago in 2007. She was the 54 hole leader, but she did not sleep on that lead. That third round was not completed till Sunday morning, and I think that makes a very, very big difference. She's also going through this whole new philosophy change about how she plays major championships, how she plays everyday golf, how she prepares, how she reacts. This will be by far her biggest test to see if she can get in that calm space where the process is way more important than the outcome. And Johnny, this is a golf course today, which we mentioned on the back nine, so people can make some moves on Christy too. Yeah, probably would have been better for Christy if it would have played uh, tough like the first couple rounds. Uh, today, there's a lot of birdie holes, tons of birdie holes. Um, you know, 17 even, which was such a tough par three, what, the first couple of days. Now it's in sort of a collectionary down there, two drivable par fours. Um, really, uh, there's some holes that can be had, like 12 down the hill with the tee up, par five. So she's going to have to make some birdies. And uh, I got to believe that there's a little Nabisco-itis in her brain. 
mentioned a little bit. You could tell a little bit more about that because you were right there, right? Well, I wasn't there, but I certainly did watch. <laughs> and she had that championship in hand until she sniped a ball quickly out of bounds at the 15th, mm -hmm. uh, although she went on to birdie the last, lost by one. And yeah. the year before that, she had mm -hmm. problems also in 2008. So we'll see how yeah. uh, Christy Kerr handles the pressure today in this Women's Open Championship. You've already heard from Gary Koch. And on the ground, we've got Roger Malpe with that final group. Also on the grounds here at Saucon Valley, Jane Crafter, two-time U.S. Women's Amateur Champion Kay Cockrell, and Tom O'Toole from the USGA here with us at 18 to decipher any rules situations that might come up and back out to the 10th. And in Kyung Kim for a birdie. Oh, man. Look at where that ball is, folks. Unbelievable. You would think uh, just gravity would pull that one into the hole. So she will remain at plus two. Two off the lead. Every stroke is so precious, Daddy, at this point. And this was a moment ago. Suzanne Pedersen with a four iron at the 11th, 167-yard par three. Boy, did this hole give the players fits yesterday when the hole was cut in the back right. This is not too bad a hole location here. That is going to be extremely fast. That putt there if it stays. Might come all the way back. I'm not sure. So there's an edge there. Will that start to come back? That's going to be just breathing on it with the greens running 13 on the stimp meter. Well, the scorecard yardage is 6740, the third longest U.S. Women's Open Championship course in history. But... The USGA has been uh, moving it up, especially on the weekends. You see the first and second round yardage, both 6,700 plus. Look at yesterday and then today at 6,337, up 403 yards. It's the shortest it has played all week. So that is going to make things even more exciting to decide it at the 10th. Yeah, you see the yardage, just 242 yards, enticing the players to try to go for the green. But Candy Kung is elected to a conservative route, but you don't want to lay up with an iron and miss the fairway, although on the right hand side, good angle to the left hole location. As we go back to the eighth, and uh, it's uh, Christy Kerr's situation, Roger. Uh, has not drawn a particularly good lot here. The ball sitting kind of deep in the uh, second cut of primary rough. 135 yards to the hole, and not a good angle with that hole cut in the left. So there is an opening in the front of the green if she can get enough club on it to get it to go up into the center of the green, I think, would be uh, what you'd be looking for. This rough's got to be pretty thick after that heavy, what was it, an inch and a half of rain last night? Yeah, close to that, John. And uh, they've been mowing the first cut of rough uh, nightly. But the uh, area where Christie is now, it has not been touched the entire week. Oh, she got it to hop out of there, but will it spin? It's a good hop. Into the bank. Wow. That killed a lot of speed. That yes, ball could have ended up yeah. anywhere. Still going to be an interesting putt up and over that little high spot in the middle of the green, back down to the hole. But a good break there. We go to 11. And Patterson looking for her first uh, birdie of the day. Ten straight pars to begin. Well, this is a tough one to expect to make. She, I uh, would think, was just trying to two putt it at best. Double breaker. Now hoping for 11 straight pars as we send you back to eight. And G's second shot. 133 left, something uh, bothering her and getting her to back off. But a driver she played from the tee just carried it across the corner of the bunker. Roger, she has hit 30 of the last 32 fairways <laughs> that she has played. That's some good driving on it. Well, work on the U.S. Open, won't it? That sure will. I'm sensing a little envy in both your voices, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. I haven't hit that many fairways in a month. Got that Camilo Bijegas follow through. Oh, good shot there. Yep. Nicely done. It's an uphill putt there. Very makeable. As we go to 11. And Whitney Lincica has a birdie attempt. This is a slightly uphill putt moving right to left. At the end, it'll flatten out. Mm. She really misjudged that. That was a bit for back-to-back -back birdies for Lincecum. Playing with Pedersen into that back nine. What's going to happen to Christy Kerr, the second and third round leader in the 64th United States Women's Open Championship from Saucon Valley back in a moment. The U.S. Women's Open Championship is being brought to you by 
MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By Titleist, every improvement counts because every shot counts. Introducing the new Pro V1 and the Pro V1X. By MetLife, guarantees for the if in life. And by Lexus, it is the official vehicle of the U.S. Women's Open. And while we were away, Pedersen for par at 11, looking for 11 straight. But just like that, drops to plus five. Back to 10. And Candy Kung second. This from 84 yards. Hole cut way on the left side. It's interesting, Gary. She talked yesterday about already having made up her mind she was going to lay up here at 10. Yeah. Well, you have to play to your strengths, don't you? Her iron play is good. That's a nice conservative shot, middle of the green. As we move over to the eighth, and uh, Christy Kerr with Raja, an interesting putt here. Well, it is. She's deep enough into the green, Gary, that she doesn't have to go to the over the biggest part of that mound that's in the kind of the right front center of this green. Uh, but we'll have to go over the back side of it. I think it'll get influenced toward the back part of the green, I believe, in the last half of the putt will be a little downhill. Rogers, that one's still coming out of the north. Uh, John, I don't know which direction it's coming out. Of. I don't <laughs> know exactly where north is right now. Here's the up and over. You can see it plainly now. It'll move to the right and pick up speed. Yeah, a lot of work left here. Yeah, pace was good, but uh, certainly underread the break. And we move up to the par for 16th. This a moment ago, Laura Davies in this championship on a special exemption has really found some new enthusiasm in the game Gary yeah. 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 loves it thought he needs what two more regular tour wins or one more major to uh, officially make the qualifying for the Hall of Fame yeah she's been waiting eight years yeah. Tishan on the way for in Kyung Kim at the bar 311th at plus two two back that should have the pace to get back there that's a good little break, just barely coming down that fall line. Pretty straight putt there. A couple of wins for Kim in the last two seasons on the LPGA Tour. Snoopy one hanging out in that beautiful blue Pennsylvania sky, providing dramatic aerial coverage of this championship. The MetLife Blimp provides coverage of major sporting events, while MetLife provides you with guarantees for the ifs in life. And we've got some ifs on this leaderboard with Kerr, Kung, Kim all separated by just a couple shots and then you've got folks trying to make a move in the back nine over at the eight. G would be certainly one of those with a good look at a birdie here, Roger. Oh, great look at a birdie here. I don't think there's much break in this spot. Pretty straight for over here. If anything, we might have a tendency to move up, but very low. One off Kerr's lead. Kerr with work left there. So we move over to the tenth. Candy Kung. This for birdie. Just to get it to even. No, it's back uphill. Never firm enough. All right, back at the eighth. Christy Kerr with. Uh, Roger, another one of those length putts you just seem to get in U.S. Opens uh, for par. And this is uh, where you got to reach inside, isn't it, Gary? You got it. You know, things kind of going the wrong way. Your fellow competitors just made a, whole, a putt for birdie, and now you uh, stare one down for par, another one. <coughs> well, she went through a little stretch like this on Friday. And bounced back quite quickly, uh, but I got to think this is a real, really important part at this at this point in the championship. She's got more people closer to her than she has in a very long time. So Christy Kerr keeps the one-shot lead. Well, a very interesting uh, duo finishing up earlier today. It included 14-year-old Alexis Thompson in her third U.S. Women's Open, but the first time she's made the cut has played the weekend. And although 
She was in contention after the first couple of rounds. Struggled a bit this weekend, but what a strong finish by Thompson. The beautiful tee shot at 17. That would be a birdie there at the par three. And then coming up with her approach at the 18th, the reigning girls junior champion and one of those players who's just got all sorts of potential. Sets up another finishing birdie and playing with Julie Inkster, 49 years old, 35 years her senior. And Julie says, I know you got a makeable uh, birdie putt there, but you know what? No one shows me up at 18. She says, I've got daughters older than you. 70 for Inkster. And the Hall of Famer finishes out in style, and so does the teenager. A couple of threes there for Thompson and Inkster. But it is Inkster who gets the better of the youngster by a couple of shots. Plus nine for Inkster, plus 11 for Alexis for the championship. How about that, Dottie? <laughs> That's a good look at Oops. the past and future, huh? Wow, on one, uh, in one pairing. The town. Just a moment ago, Dan, this was Young Park for a birdie. Led the field through three rounds in putting, just 82 putts on these greens. That is impressive. That birdie moves her to plus four. Never even thought about moving her head, Gary. Oh, no, that was uh, pretty textbook there. We go to nine. 221 yard par three again, and here is G, who's only made a few pars, all the rest of bogeys and birdies. Players do have to cross Sockham Creek, which is about 30 yards short of the green. Shouldn't be in play unless a total miss hit. Long, tough par here if you make three. Three with here. Going with that cut, Roger. Yeah, yeah. she's playing that Stop. cut and it's going at the center of the green at the hole. Oh, what a shot that was. Quite a good shot. She's putting pressure on Christy Kerr. Uh, that's, she's not melting, that's for sure. She's putting a little fire under there. To 18, the top player in the world. This was her second shot a moment ago. Lorena has just never had it going, although she did shoot a good first round, 69, but had a 79 in the second round and has had a has had three double bogeys today. Good shot there, but a good shot there. She actually got it back to six over par after a birdie at the 12th. But six double bogeys on the week. Very uncharacteristic for Ochoa. Now Kim for her birdie at 11. Not a lot of break here. Very fast. Easy putt, really. Grabs an edge, but won't go down. Kim stays at plus two. And we go over to the ninth. Good look down there. With the green complex across that creek, Johnny, you talked about. Yeah, I mean, it's in play if you happen to really miss hit it. No doubt about that. Leader by one, Christy Kerr. This is a much higher trajectory. It's going at the left side of the green. Hey, any place in the green, that's a bad shot. Absolutely. That's it. And G will have a pretty good line there. Let's go to 12. Brittany Lincecum going for it. This hole up 24 yards, 531 yards today. 210 to the front, 232 to the hole. Slinging it in a little right to left. That is her favorite shot. Oh, it's got a chance. Wow. Remember, she made an eagle to win first major championship of the year at the last hole. That would have been a nice double eagle, huh? Pretty surprised how easily this course is set up today. It really is playing easy. That took an edge. Lincecum gave it a scare in two at the par 512. All sorts of possibilities on the back nine at Saucon Valley. Christy Kerr at even par the leader at the moment. Great moments in golf on NBC. NBC Sports. 
home of golf's best. What a way to go out. Maybe as Annika Sorenstam hold that shot at interlocking. You might have seen Christy Kerr there giving her a hug playing with Annika in that 2008 Women's Open. First time in 15 opens uh, that we have not had Annika a part of it. So we wish her and husband Mike the best. Upcoming family. Kerr now at the ninth for birdie. Well normally parring in with the lead in an open with. Just over nine holes to go counting this but you'd think if you made all pars you would win but I Dottie I think she's going to have to play. At, at least one under par with the way the back nine is playing. Back nine is is so short that. Um, she's got I think going to have to shoot at least a couple oh. under. That looks good. Oh. Some speed to it. She's going to have to rely on that putter again. I remember her mindset last night though when she talked to Roger afterwards was that she thought she would have to shoot under par today. She thought that's what I'd be proud of a shot under par. Now she's going to need to. Over at 11 Candy Kong. That tie for second at plus one. She's doing a lot of body English but it makes it by about a foot. So that's a make of a little uh, chip shot from there. Want golf updates whenever and wherever? Use NBC Sports Mobile. Get them right on your cell phone. Just text the word golf to 51515. That's the letters G O L F to 51515. Sock and Creek there, a little trout stream. It's nice. And a good look at the ninth green. And it'll be Yoon Hee G. A very makeable putt, Roger Malpe. It is, Johnny. I think it'll move a little bit to the right, if anything, but. Uh, yeah. This is a good look at Birdie here. Yeah. Not a lot of breaking, a little uphill. Well, we saw this earlier, didn't we? And uh, uh, just didn't break at all. Did it stayed dead straight. Yeah, that looks to me that's like what it we might saw want before. Appeal, okay. This is a chance for a third birdie in the last four holes. Pretty amazing that this player is only in her second full season on this tour. Learned a lot in a hurry. Does she know this is straight? Well, she played it to break, but it just doesn't do a darn thing. Over to the 12th. We've got Pedersen for birdie. 12 is going to be one of those holes you can make a move on eagle birdie possibilities and Pedersen picks up the birdie and she's back to plus four. And we saw Lorena Ochoa's approach into 18 so just a short distance away from a finishing birdie for Lorena who just really hasn't been herself most of the year that even though she's uh, won this year. She's won twice but Dan she's cut back her schedule and I don't think she's playing enough golf right now to play herself out of this little funk. All right eagle attempt for Lincecum at 12 K. You could not be looking at much better a putt. This does not look like it has any movement to it and she just saw Pedersen's drop from near the same angle. Just to get within two playing a little break to the right. Just not quite enough. And over to the ninth, Roger uh, Kerr looking for another nice par saver here. Well, these are scary in a U.S. Open, I'll tell you that. You don't want too many of these. Just came and made one in the last hole. Oh, was she lucky that the alarm didn't go off a split second sooner? Another nice par saver for Kerr. And she is hanging on so far. Through the first nine. Back out to 11. Candy Kong second, just short. And got a free drop. Her ball was up against the uh, longer rock. Was able to get a drop because she was standing on the spring for her. Looks and like very fortuitous. Yeah, looks like she'll be able to stay at plus one. And over at the tenth, this is Jean Reynolds for a par. Went for the green off the tee. Hit it well to the left. Of course, Reynolds so much the story the first three rounds, but a tough day so far today. Three bogeys and not a single birdie. Now plus five. You can get updated on all the stories, plus exclusive video, features, analysis. It's all on NBCSports.com following today's championship coverage on NBCSports.com. It's the Lexus 
wrap-up show. Back out to the par 5 12th in Kyung Kim's third shot to this par 5. At plus two, one under on the day, and a chance if that stays up there. Now it's going to go back into the valley. It's one of those whole locations that looks simple unless you miss by just about six feet, and there are a ton of them out here today. Make you be very precise. That doesn't look like an easy putt or two putt for that matter. Out to 10. And a good look at the dog leg right par four using uh, the up tee that was created uh, specifically for this championship. Mike Davis in charge of the setup made the suggestion as the renovations were being made here uh, a couple of years ago to uh, create this tee for this exact reason. Give the players an option. Try to drive the green or just lay up. And Gary, what a start G had on this back nine at this 10th yesterday on her way to shooting 32 on the back birdie this hole to get it all started. Puts her shot shape, natural shot shape, very nicely, Rog. And if I'd hit 30 of the last 32 fairways, I'd have taken a shot at it too, but this pulled a little bit going up the uh, left. Oh, and that catches that first of two bunkers up the left side, and that leaves a very awkward shot over another bunker with the hole cut close on the left hand side. That's Paula Creamer territory yesterday. She hit it in there and ended up making a triple bogey. Christy Kerr has uh, been very conservative on this hole. Was uh, hit a five iron off the tee yesterday. Roger, I think her line was uh, anytime I could put a lob wedge in my hand in a U.S. Open, I feel like I should have a pretty good birdie opportunity yeah. after that. I don't know that I'd agree or disagree with that uh, philosophy. Certainly as good as she is with the lob wedge. She should give herself a birdie opportunity if she gets this five iron in the fairway. is just through the fairway at those two bunkers you can see in the distance. Solid swing. Just going up the left center of the fairway. Left side of the fairway. Should be fine. Okay, so two very different uh, approaches there at the 10. More aggressive. First, Mr. Kerr. More conservative. And speaking of Paula Creamer, this is her tee shot at 17. Just 126 yards today, down the hill, back left hole location, and we have seen a lot of balls close. And there's another one. And Paula Creamer with a chance to get to plus four. And Gary Creamer played in that final group with Christy Curry yesterday, began yesterday's play one back, but uh, was tempted and then tantalized and then victimized by the 10th. Drove it up there, gave it a shot, and then paid the price. Blade of that one out of the bunker. This one coming up short in the rough. And just all of a sudden, Kramer shot herself out of the championship. This her fifth shot. It's a mistake off the tee and then compounded mistakes to follow. No magic in that pink ball yesterday, and especially on this hole. This for double bogey. And after it all ended, a triple bogey seven for Kramer. Only triple bogey all weekend at the 10th. Many people, including us, you know, thought that uh, Paula was actually uh, crying just a little bit there. Paula said, nope, I was just so bummed out. I was just counting all the shots and not believing that I hit it seven times at 10. As we move to the 13th, once it comes second with the par four, just from 167. Takes it out to the right, trying to get it to turn toward the left hole location. Look at this. Oh, her length of oh, big advantage man, here, Gary. look at this. Great shot. So that almost a certain birdie for Brittany Lincecombe. And <laughs> she's loving it. Just a smile there. We've heard a plus two. Now, we mentioned it, didn't we, Dottie, that uh, the players with the added length, uh, the great opportunities here on this back nine. Look at this, look at the power here, just driving through, head down, great acceleration and extension through. Nice firm left leg, left side. I've known Brittany since she was about 12 years old. She's from down around my area, played in a pro junior event that I host every year. And Dottie, she was driving it at over greens on par fours when I played with her back then, up from the ladies tees. Uh, hasn't lost any of that length, that's for sure. All right, back at 10. Christy Kerr with her second, Roger. 
And she hit a beauty in here yesterday from 78 yards. Today she has 77. And back stop behind the hole there. A couple of chances to get this one close here, Gary. Yeah, the uh, the best shots we've seen, Roger, have utilized that backstop about uh, five paces behind the hole. Retreated the straighter that putt actually got. Mm -hmm. And she'll do a little talking to her ball, which reminds me of uh, gal sitting next to me here a little bit. Over what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Over at the 12th, Kim for birdie. And this is coming up this uh, ridge here, which it floated back down. Beautiful speed yet again. So it'll be a par for NQ and Kim. She'll stay at plus two. We go back to 10. And she with her second shot, Roger, and uh, this is the one where you have to make a decision. Well, yes, uh, she's got 27 yards to the hole. Uh, again, long bunker shot uh, across the corner of the bunker. Do you want to aim that way or do you want to play right in the hole and give yourself a, a longer chance, but to make it the safer play? Yeah, a little margin of error. And what do you play it with? It doesn't need to be your most lofted sand iron. Often a gap wedge makes this shot easier. Yep. Jumped. Yep. That's uh, exactly what we saw from Creamer yesterday. Made the mistake. You can play to the right there. You can see the opening in front of the green. Moved to 17. Paula Creamer for her birdie two. Moved to plus four. There we go. She certainly has been the crowd favorite this week. Support. I don't think Gary had heard that she threw out the first pitch on Monday night at the ah. Phillies game and they won 22 to 1. <laughs> yes, a lot of Phillies fans in this area, no question. All right, back at 10 and uh, Raj, this bunker shot not that easy. Uh, no, it doesn't have a lot of green to work with, but she too has that back so, uh, stop behind the hole. But it uh, looks like it might have enough pitch to bring it back a little bit toward the hole. Playing these bunker shots with a very square club face of the Club tends to dig when you do that. That's certainly what happened on the last one. And it happened there. Yep. Jumped. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to open the face up so you can utilize the bounce on the bottom of the club. When it's square face like that, it digs in. That's the way you want to play a buried bunker shot when you want to get the club deep into the sand. It's just uh, a real shame on a short par four. Tempting. All right, let's take a look at this again. Using our NBC at technology, we'll zoom in there real close, and you can see that club face very square. And consequently, when she comes down, she's going to dig very deeply into the sand. Almost like she took it back super square, too. Yep. Yep. So uh, it's uh, just two mistakes in a row here. Playing this little chip with a square face, not opening it up at all. This is a mini Paula Creamer we're watching here. Well, I guarantee you there's one Mike Davis from the USGA watching this thinking, aha, you know, <laughs> I got somebody. Again. Again. So we could see quite a swing here between G and Kerr, especially if Kerr is able to get this birdie put down, and she has been very solid all week on the greens. And that, according to her, has been hard earned. I work on my speed, especially this week, so much, you know, uphill, downhill, you know, I probably putt for almost 40 minutes, you know, every before every round, just to just so that when I'm out on the course, the speed's not a factor, you know, so you're not guessing of how hard you're going to hit it. And, you know, I've done my homework on the greens as far as where it's fast and where it's uphill. Uh, I have to tell you not too many uphill putts on these greens, by the way. Meticulous preparation for Kurt, who also told me Last night, she's been blessed with great rhythm in the putting stroke. And Johnny, you were talking earlier about how the put, the ball almost seems to attach itself to the putter a lot longer than other players. She has either trained herself or is just gifted in that when she hits the putt, most people just have a stroke that falls through maybe six or eight inches. Her club just chases through past the ball two or three inches farther than anybody I've seen. Men are 
woman. And very low while it's chasing for a very long time before it releases up. And you'll see that here. Watch how she hits through her putts. And this is extremely makeable. Once she, she's got to take advantage of half of these coming in, even though 10, 12, 15, 17, and 18 are just right there for the taking birdie holes. She should have great chances on those holes if she plays them well. Of course, the rest of the field goal too. Watch how she gets through it. See how far that fall through is? Slow putt. Yeah, it's very slow. Yeah, you can hear her say, hit it. 13, this short one now for Lincecum to get to plus two. Nicely done. Three birdies in her opening uh, four holes of the back nine. Can Brittany Lincecum be the one to take advantage of these easier holes? Back to 10. EG now for her bogey five. And Raj, this is not an easy one. I think this line will move me to the left in it. Mm -hmm. And speedy. Yeah, if you're not careful, I mean, it's the kind of putt that, you know, can get underneath the hole on you real quick. Yeah, these to me are always tough. Down the hill, you want to hit them so easily that uh, oftentimes the ball will kind of dart to the left underneath the hole. Shot lead at the moment. Can Christy Kerr hang on? Well, stay with us. This was the defending champion, NB Park, the champion from Interlochen last year, finishing up with a bogey. Just hasn't been able to recapture the same kind of magic which led her to that championship last year. But happy birthday to NB. 13 days shy of her 20th birthday last year. She was the youngest winner ever breaking Sari Pox record. Now at the 12th, Candy Khan at the par five. Solid it's been a strike. Fun. Really solid. Yeah, had a baby. I would say so. Well, Khan has just been moving up the leaderboard, a chance to get to even and tie for the lead. As we go back to the final group at 11. This hole on TV looks really easy, folks, but it's quite uphill, 20 feet. You can't see much of the flag, as you can see from there, maybe just over half of the flag and at uh, five iron. And so there's a small little target there. It's got a crazy slope on it. But today, the whole location is in a very manageable spot. Four Yesterday, it was something else, wasn't it, Dottie? Yesterday and Thursday, both. Anything in the back part of the screen is so... Trusted. It's only so All difficult. Right. Yeah, you don't want to go long here on this hole yeah. today. Not that you can't right. knock it down reasonably close, but it's very fast above the hole. The screen a From foot the right. slower than the rest on the golf course yeah. because the severity of that slope. Wind gusting a little bit now, uh, right to left and hurting the player. So. Well, we're ready for one of those Christy Kerr irons. Come on, baby. Come on. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. She's out. Get out. She is into it. No doubt about that. Now, G, who has not hit the green at 11 all week, but has gotten up and down for par each and every time. But now, Staying from the double at the previous hole, which has now left her three back. Really does sting, too, on a hole that short to walk away with double. That is tough to take. Three iron now for G. 
Well, G weighs about as much as her bag, but I'll tell you what, this is one heck of a golf swing right here. High fade, um, beautiful fall through, almost identical, like I said, to Camilo Villegas, uh, and it's this beautiful cut shot. Number one on Green's hit up to the to today. Watch this action. Try to copy it. Back swing a little bit like Sergio's action. It's got a little move in it where it drops it off like you say, but it's got to get up through the ball. She missed hit. That was a different back swing. That was smooth as we've been watching. Up to 13. And in Kyung Kim's third shot here at the lengthy par four came up short. Green in two. Pretty well done, so a good chance to save par and remain at plus two. Up to 14. And Lincecum trying to keep this birdie run going, Kay. Hit a good solid three wood off the tee. That's left her with 145 yards. Wind picking up again, hurting and out of the left, out of the northwest. Caddy there, Tara Bateman, is a former mini tour player herself. and. It's been uh, a positive experience for both of these players. They both think very much alike. There's a gorgeous swing, and uh, she's eight under par for the back nine this week, which I think is probably the lowest of any player. So, and she's also got, finally, she knows she has a chance to win this championship, and probably the adrenaline is starting to pump, Dottie. You know, before she was sort of outside looking in, now she's inside. Well, she's right there, absolutely. Just 23 years old, but she does have a major under her belt already. He's been on tour for five years. Another one of those who turned pro as a teenager at 18. And over at 17, this is Jennifer Song, the 18-year-old amateur. Birdie putt. She's at plus seven. Right now, two shots ahead in the low amateur race. At uh, young Jessica Corda with a final round 69, the same score she shot in last year's Women's Open in the final round, and that was the only round under 70 at Interlochen last year. So Jennifer Song should uh, come away with the low amateur honors. As we move over to 13, and, and Kyung Kim for her par to remain two off the lead. Would call her a good putter, not a great putter. 93 putts through the first three rounds, Dottie. So striking the ball extremely well, second in driving accuracy and second in greens hit and regulation. But right, we go back to 12. And Kerr could have some company here if Candy Kong's birdie putt goes in. Dottie mentioned that she won a USGA championship, women's amateur public links champion back in 2001, was the AJGA player of the year. Did not really take the game too seriously until the mid 90s when she moved to the United States after she was born in Taiwan and a couple of years later made it to the finals of the girls junior. And just right edge downhill. And yet another birdie for Candy Kong. That is four on the day moves her to even par and tie with Christy Kerr in the U.S. Women's Open. Couldn't be better weather at picturesque Saucon Valley Country Club for the 64th United States Women's Open. And Christy Kerr has been caught by Candy Kung, who has nine birdies now in the last two rounds and is showing no signs of cooling off to 11 and Kerr. The swinger from right to left here. Get the lead back herself, yeah. has already putted up from short of the green and left herself a, oh, a couple of feet for par. And Paula Creamer, who obviously wants so desperately to win this championship. We talked about it earlier. Sometimes you can run it too much, but how's that for a up and down weekend? 68 Friday and then 79 yesterday, and then brings it back 10 shots today. Gutsy yeah. performance. I think she's a leader in the clubhouse. And Candy Kung on the tee at the 13th. Trying to take it down the right side and get it to turn. And you don't want to miss the fairway here, no. Gary. Uh oh, she gets a nice bounce, Dottie. That's going to be just fine. And at 14. Brittany Lincecum, long range birdie putt. By the way, Johnny, you are right, Creamer. 
plus four is the leader in the clubhouse. I mean, it's a one in a hundred, but yeah. she could get in the playoff. Yeah. Who knows? Everybody could fall apart a little bit. A lot. Well, that'd be a lot <laughs> well, of wrecks, yes, but it would I've seen be, a lot of wrecks still. in the U.S. Open. <laughs> yeah, we have, haven't we? And all that's left for Kerr to remain at even. Let's see if she can make one of her vintage smooth strokes here. Like a railroad tracker stroke is. I don't know how many butterflies are flying in her stomach. You know, they can fly as long as they're in formation. They can fly all they want. Yeah. Said she's been calm, peaceful this week. Very confident. And over at 17, I Miyazato with a nice round going. She's two under par for the day. This to get it to plus three, three under. That's the mystery. Part of her game that's holding her back, Gary. Yeah. So we go to 14. Pedersen has a birdie try, Kay. She's backed off this putt once, playing quite slowly right now. Bogeyed the last. Why is it that when you back away, a la Hubert Green at the Masters or whatever, that you just don't make them? And she's backed off a lot of putts today, which to me says she's indecisive and unsure. So Pedersen stays at plus five. And the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One stays up in the air for us, providing some beautiful coverage. Visit MetLife.com to learn more about the Blimp program's 20 plus year history. MetLife guarantees for the if in life. And back down, hovering over 14. Lincecum has a little work left here to stay at plus two, two under on a round. Not much here. If you miss this, you got to regroup, that's for sure. You make yeah. this 100 out of 100. Johnny had about a 45 footer for that first putt from the lower level. Oh, oh. got on the left side. Took it back a little too far and then quit on it. That was very lucky. But she stays at plus two. Wow. I think the realization, I'd say I've been there before, you've probably been there, Dottie. When you finally realize you got a chance to win, there's this surge of adrenaline that comes. Kind of like the guys that play on the shores of Tahoe. Oh yeah, just like it. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Ben Roethlisberger, Charles Barkley in a very entertaining championship that we look forward to again Saturday 3 Eastern time. Our coverage begins on NBC. A chance to see Charles Barkley in action. Well, he'll be the Haney project. I think the first drive. I think the <laughs> Hank Haney project will never end with Charles. Yeah. Well, there's the shot shape. Uh, this is a beautiful hole at the par five. Just, well, just a go and draw, Donnie. If you hit that downslope where that arrow that is right there, right. it will run and run and run. Well, this player not as long as Brittany Lindsaycomb, but long enough to catch the downslope to take the bunker on the left out of play. And this tee shot, uh, Roger moved up for just that purpose. Yes, and the wind uh, really helping uh, the players at the moment. Maybe coming off the right a little bit, but certainly. Uh, of benefit to the players here, but the shot shape is what it's all about, catching it solid. Right along that bunker on the left side, she likes it. Not even watch it. It's a blind tee shot. She's going to take it right at that bunker. Yeah, well, stay in there and it, watch it go down that hill. Just look at this. ideal. Look at this thing chuck down that hill. That is reachable in two for her. Big tee shot, very important tee shot right there. Confident swing. Looked like the swing she made at the 18th a couple of years ago at Pine Needles when she smashed it. All right, so what is Lincecum going to do here? It'll be 15? interesting to see, Dan. Uh, both she and Suzanne walked up to this tee kind of quizzically looking at each other. They couldn't believe it was was up here, although you have to think they've got quality caddies. The caddies were out scouring the course this morning. She's got to go for it. 239 to the front edge. Number one in driving distance this week, averaging 268. Come on, it's just a three medal. For that, go back to 13. Candy Kong, second shot. Utility loop from 190. Chiefs after that one beautifully. A lot of divot on that shot. Good yeah, shot. Beautifully played. Should it ease its way back toward the hole just a little? Back at 15. Still thinking, still talking about it. And we mentioned the dramatic ending she had at the Craft Nabisco Championship earlier this year. The final hole from 210 yards. 
Walker will pass the ball on the big slope in the back right corner, slings it all the way back to the ball location. That's got to be a good feeling right there watching that. <laughs> and that just kept getting better and better to finish one ahead of Christy Kerr and Christy McPherson. An eager finish for Linsa Cohn to pick up the first major of her young career. Doing it in style at the craft. Here at the U.S. Women's Open, trying to make some noise here at the 15th. The reachable, drivable 15th. It, it is a little under the wind. It might be a drive, cut driver, maybe a big three metal. What is it? She's got the three metal going. Same Went club. Helping and left to right. Yeah, same club she hit in the right front bunker at 10. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, she's pulled it with a draw. Wow. Okay, people going for these par fours that have been disaster. And that's a heavy, untouched grass over there. That was on a line not that far to the 18th green. The good news is that's not too bad. She got green to work with, I think. Uh, let's take a look at this. She got quick at the top. But you can see where that hole location is. But watch this shot. That is the shot she fights, Johnny. Yeah, she hung back on that left side and just gave it a lot of hand action. And uh, let's see here. Well, it got a good bounce, though. She didn't catch that tree. And she does have a shot. There's no doubt about it. Creamer, G have paid the price. That short par four is what will Lincecum do at 15. Total of six USGA events held here now. The last two, 92 US Senior Open was the first USGA Open held here. Larry Loretti and that cigar ever present in his mouth came back from a long way back to shoot 67, 68 on the weekend to pick up his only win on the Senior Tour. Hale Irwin then in 2000 shot a pair of 65s to overtake Bruce Fleischer by three. 17 under was the number, the lowest 72 hole score ever in a USGA Open. And there's a look at the other USGA National Championships held here, beginning back in 1951 at the US Men's Am. Out to Candy Kong at 13. And a birdie putt, Dan, that would uh, give her the outright lead at one under par. And Gary, a pretty speedy putt it is, and it will work in from left to right off the ridge that bisects this green. It's been a tough putt to uh, read from this side of the green. Uh, Jane, I've, I've watched a number of players overread the break. Got the tape on her hands, Gary. That's uh, about three times the amount that Raymond Floyd ever played with. Yeah, really. But I don't think Raymond quite had it color coordinated. coordinated. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Raymond's like, where's the white tape? I'm hoping that was an accident. <laughs> Respectful of the speed, but a par here is a good score. Fifth most difficult hole on the course today, playing a stroke average of about a quarter of a stroke over par. So she'll remain at even. We go back to 12. Okay, good look at the whole location there. Christy Kerr has bombed her drive down that slope. One of the marshals mentioned uh, down here that the uh, longest drive of the day. Uh, has only got 230 left to the hole, 208 to the front of the green. Jenny, she's driven it in position. Back now she needs to take advantage of it. She sure does, and if she doesn't make par, I birdie here, she's not going to be a happy camper, I'll tell you that. But this is not an easy, it's uh, still on a downslope, right, Roger? It is on a downslope, and the ball slightly above her feet as well, but uh, kind of a hanging one. You can sort of chase one in there, I think, uh, instead of trying to hit it high off a downslope. What you really yeah, want to do off the downslope is swing with the bunker, slope right? and hit right. it low and chase it in there. I prefer the bunker, the right bunker is better, don't you think? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe just barely right of it. Okay. Oh, no. Still from the right? Should be. Should be Well, reposition here after bogeying the first two par fives already today. Whole location's right here. And she can chase it right in through the gap there. It's about a 30 foot opening. And uh, I really believe she should scoot it in, uh, hitting 10 or 12, 15 yards short, and one hop on and trickle up there. Your caddy there, Good. John Kleem, was caddying for Meg Mallon when she won in 04 at the Orchards. There's a low hook, oh, though. Carry it! Go! Now this is turning toward the left side of the green. 
Well, they might have caught that bunker short. Yeah, it did. It would have landed just about what I was talking about, but she turned the club over. All right, Lindsay Comer at 15, her second K. Oh, that just got up and cleared the bunker. Wow, that's pretty good stuff right there. There's a hollow right there, and all the balls want to go right in that area, about 15, 15 feet from the hole. Now it's chasing away, but all in all, there's a little drainage shoot that she has caught, and it just trickles and trickles, but not a bad spot. Pretty good shot just to keep it on the green. Close in here, we get a look at the action. Watch how the ball pops up. Look at this, how straight up that ball comes just to the, I don't know what that angle is, but it's definitely coming up quick on huh, Dottie. So is the rough. Yeah. You got to have a little bit of strength in those wrists if you want to play this game. And it just gets over the rough a across tough shot. the bunker. Like Kay said, she had to hit a great shot just to keep it on the green. It was so quick going that way. Look at Lindsay Combs' card. Lincecum began the day at plus four, six shots behind Kerr. Largest comeback, final round comeback in U.S. Women's Open history, five shots. It's been done several times. The latest by the now retired Annika Sorenstam, the first of her two back-to-back -back Women's Open titles at the Broadmoor. Over at the 14th, we've got In Hyung Kim with a long birdie try. Quite enough. She'll stay at plus two, two behind. So you got Lincecum at plus two, Kim at plus two. And back to 15. This is not a lot of break, is it, Kay? I mean, uh, it's it's a doable putt. I mean, it's not like it's got a big swing to it. It's just slow. And you'll notice how many putts are starting to come up short because of U.S. Open Sunday pressure. needs to go big wow. time and that's just what happens under pressure you just don't release the club sort of instead of swinging it and uh, you'll see putt after putt in the next couple hours of players leaving it short that was a chance for four birdies in her first six holes of the back nine and here is the amateur song finishing up her round four par at plus seven so a good week for song out of the last three years, she has been low amateur. And there are the final results for the seven amateurs who made the cut. Near 30 began this championship. So many good young players playing women's golf right now. And over at the 12th, we've got G in her third, 117. Not too late, it's really one off the tee, one with three wood. And again, another fairway wood to this point. That sounded good, Raj. Yeah, it's just a little left. That is uh, really crispy. Stops nearly the pitch mark. So G will have a good chance at birdie. Curves in that bunker in two at the par five. And we move ahead to 14 and Kung off the tee. 399 yard par four. He likes it. Quick tempo, like a Nick Price. Boom, boom. Right, likes to turn it just a little bit from right to left, and that's a perfect setup for this hole, certainly. So Kung is in that third to last group, tied with Kerr, who's in the final group. And speaking of Kerr, this does not look like an easy bunker shot for her third. Well, it's not. It, uh, the hole's cut on the rear portion of the green, just kind of over up a bowl immediately in front of the hole on a ridge. It's only about three or four paces on top of that ridge. So uh, that's, she gave up her advantage off the tee. I'd say the odds of her getting, there's a bowl here. I hope I have, to, I have time, but there's a bowl right here that everything wants to go in there. And you, for her to get it over that bowl and onto the top uh, edge, I'd say is one out of four. She'll probably end up like 15 feet, 18 feet short of the hole down in the bowl uh, in this area here. Where do you take your medicine and play left of that bowl? Well, I think that that's not the hardest spot in the world, to be honest with you. Down there, you're probably not going to make it, but it's, uh, you, you hate to give up that drive, which some people told uh, Roger that might have been the longest drive of the day. So that was a big advantage she gave up. But everybody's been going for these shots this week. We haven't seen much benefit from it, have we, Dan? Well, Kerr prides herself in course management, not making the wrong move at the wrong time and staying away from the big mistakes. Eyes are looking left. 
Down it pretty quick. Come on a little hot. Popped yeah. it up there pretty good. Oh, that's a nice spin. But that shot, that was a gutsy shot. Right. That, that was a little clicky, but it worked. Yeah, that, that was excellent. Uh, Jim McLean said he was working, uh, his her teacher, working on the shots around the green, and it paid off there. And it's a comb for par at 15. Just gets it in there for par. Boy, after that first putt, that was a heck of a second putt. So that Dottie, <laughs> look at that. She's a happy woman. Snuck him in on both of the last two holes for pars. So Lincecum goes for the green at 15, <laughs> settles for par. She's a plus two, three holes left. Yep, Jordan. Over at 14. And Candy Cunning and Jeff King uh, discussing what club. She has 122 to yep. 143 to play. Wind starting to pressure a little bit from behind and uh, left to right. I didn't like the left edge of power with the wind where it's at. Yeah. Oh, look at these. These are classic numbers and how to win major championships. Misses just two fairways, hit 10 of 13 greens, and only 20 putts. Really putting beautifully, Dottie, and uh, her stats on the old PGA this year. You wouldn't really expect that. And not coming in here, would you have thought this would have been a place she could turn it around? She's missed. Three of her last five cuts. She's made fewer bogeys than anyone in the field this week. Just the starting at the middle of the green, Johnny, and will not bounce up over that ridge. Not bad. Second for In Kyung Kim at 15, plus two, two behind from just 70 yards, choosing to lay up, not go the Lindsay home route. And there's more than one way to make birdie there. And back over to 12. This would be uh, some up and down here, Roger. It would. It's only gotten the ball up and down from bunkers one out of six times this week, so this would be huge. I think it'll move just a little smidge to her right. It hasn't made a birdie at this par five all week. Talked about how detailed she is. Her longtime coach, Jim McClain, Johnny, who you mentioned, said when as a young teenager, when she took lessons from Jim, she would take notes at every single lesson. She has huge notebooks piled with those notes still to this day that she's kept from the play. I cannot pull off the up and down. I had that as a straight putt, and it sort of was straight. So Kerr gave it a go at the par 512. Unable to get it up and down, settles for a par, remains even, plus two, on a round. And tied with Candy Kung, who is three under, and has one of the best rounds going out there. Lincecum and Kim lurking at plus two. It's the biggest title in the world in women's golf, and while we're away, this was G4 birdie. Just powers it by. She did go on to make that comebacker for par to remain at plus three, but that was a good chance to cut into the Kerr lead. And now Candy Kung at 14 for Birdie Jane. About 30 feet down up the, the little ridge, look from left to right, and then kind of flatten out at the end. It'll definitely move left to right, right in there. And a slow putt. Yeah, it does flatten out at the hole. It's a good read. Just a lot of putts short. I talked about that a little bit ago. Kong's going to stay at even. And now Kim at 15 to get to plus one within one. Got to make these if you want to have a chance to win. The hole is shrinking up, isn't it, Dottie? It is shrinking up and everybody becoming just an ounce more tentative. Kim with a couple of wins on tour, just 20 years old. Trying to handle the moment over at 13. Christy Kerr off the tee there. The hole they call narrows. It's a dead straight par four. Not a bunker on the entire hole. And Christy Kerr has split the center of the fairway. Over at 17. Remember the tee moved way up just 126 yards. This was Sun Ju An's tee shot. Best players on the Korean LPGA Tour. How about this shot, Daddy? Oh, wow! That's what we're expecting <laughs> at 17. It is possible. 
And at the top of the show, we said this back nine especially was really going to be fun, and it is game on here at Sock and Valley. Dottie, you got a feeling? Uh, I mean, at the top of the show, you mentioned how Christy Kerr trying to hang on. It would be different because she slept on this lead. I think uh, we're seeing a little nerves from everyone right I, now. I think we are. And, and earlier today, I thought even par uh, would would be the number today. Uh, that was before I found out about these changes. I do believe it's going to have to be at least one, maybe two under par. These, somebody's going to, I think, make a birdie at 17 and maybe even at 18. That whole location's mm -hmm. cutting a bit of a feeder bowl. Uh, you could see some fireworks. You know, I think USJ was pretty wily because they got the score they wanted going into this round, so they moved the tees up. Uh, the course average their first three days was 76 for the field. Today it's three shots lower. Uh, there was only 18 rounds under par for three rounds. And now there's 13 in one round. So, you know, there's some serious birdies out there if your nerves are in, in check and you can play good golf. And uh, right there, uh, um, Dan. No nerves among our announcers. Gary Koch feeling as confident as ever. Yeah. Alpi, Cockrell, Crafter, Tom O'Toole up with us at 18 from the USGA. And out to that 17th. And there's a familiar player here who's had her moments in this championship, Gary. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Forget uh, a few years ago when she had a chance to win this championship as a young amateur. Taken away from her by Bertie Kim's bunker shot on the final hole, but there's another good one, and this 17th is playing under par for the day, so certainly a birdie hole. As we move back to 16, and uh, okay, this does not look particularly good for Brittany Lensico. It could actually be worse. She blew it 50 yards right off the tee, a dead push, ended up in the ice cream stand, <laughs> got relief, and she actually has a shot. Now, it's not going to be an easy shot. She's going to have to hit some sort of a low punch, low rising cut. There's a little window higher that she could go through, 108 yards, so she has a lot of club. Is all stay below the tree? Yeah, 120 would be up and then into the wind. Back in now the one thing you want to do here is make sure you don't miss right. All locations on the far right hand side of the green. Put in that right green side bunker, virtually impossible to get it up and down. Something a little short left of the hole location gives you a very makeable putt. She's also drawn a good lie. Job one, keep it low and get it out of there. Got to order herself a double chocolate chip man on the way out of there yeah. for that shot. Yes. Layup time. Good look across the water here. This is like her decision at the 10th. Yeah. I'm laying up. Yep. She didn't light up so well at 10, but uh, and she hasn't right. light it up again well either, Johnny. That was just a horrendous little oh, layup. It's it's no. up. What a break that was for that ball to sit up. Yeah, but that's not a good angle for that whole location on the front right, but uh, that is a good break. Over to 13. And this just a moment ago, G's second shot from 189 yards. Go, go, go. Asking for it to go. Boy, that's and guess pure. what? That it did. Pure. Oh, how good is that, Johnny? <laughs> that is just pure. I think even we could make that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could. All right. I added 17. Pressel for the birdie. Slow putt here back up the hill. She's gotten it going in spurts this week, but hasn't just been able to finish a round off. Yeah. It's got to be very frustrating, I would think, as we go back to 13 and Kerr getting ready with her second shot. And 178 left, one down, maybe a little bit left right, but almost straight down. Whole front left. We haven't got to be disappointed coming off that par. We haven't seen Gary those Kerr iron shots. You know, just one birdie today, and she's not hitting those irons stiff like she has been doing all week. Yeah. Now well, it doesn't seem like she's been able to control the distance as well as she did earlier in the week. And this is going right. That's a classic nervous swing where you just leave the toe open and just wipe it across. Yeah. A little hang on action. We've all been there. Well, Christy Kerr and Candy Kong tied. Final round of the U.S. Women's Open. Stay with us.
right, let's take another look at Christy Kerr's second shot here at 13 using our NBC at Technology. Zoom in, and I want you to kind of watch her head right here. Watch how her head backs up as she comes back down into the ball, how it moves back up and away, comes right out of the shot, and that's what leaves it out to the right. That is not the swing she's been using where no. she's been trapping the face and just making that great sound. Actually, she had more sound on her iron, her iron shots than any player in the field that we've seen just sticking them on the face, and that was a white. All right, how about the third shot here now, Roger? Well, Chip here will be uh, influenced from right to left, and we'll have to come up across a bit of a ridge uh, about two-thirds of the way to the hole. But uh, the biggest issue here is she has a good lie and should be able to control uh, contact of the ball. Should be a little simpler chip than she had here yesterday. Oh, that's got to go. Got All right, we move ahead to 16. Brittany Lincecum, uphill putt for birdie. Should be moving to her right. This one's carrying a lot of speed. Ooh yeah, that's up above the hole. Over 50 million people have made it this summer's number one show. They have a dream, and we've got the stage. It's America's Got Talent coming your way Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 9, 8 Central on NBC. And over to 15, where Kung got a break here, Jane, with the ball sitting up a bit. Yeah, not too bad of a lie, Dan. Just a little bit of a nest fly, but uh, all in all, I'd say she's pretty fortunate. She's looking at a shot of 86 to the front, 91 to the hole. And the wind is coming from left to right and helping very much uphill all the way. Most likely she'll hit it in that trough, Jean. If she hits a flush. Oh, yeah, she caught it heavy, and Johnny, she's really been walking very quickly. I think the pressure might be just starting to mount on her shoulders right now. You think? Well, four <laughs> holes left, tied for the lead in the open. And this, a good look at this downswing in 7,000 frames per second. Watch you catch it high on the face. Look at this. Way up on top of the face, she hit that ball. That's why it went absolutely nowhere. The ball's sitting up, and she took a big divot. Well, you can't have the ball sit up two inches and take a deep divot and not hit the top of the club. To 13. And the important par putt now for Christy Kerr to remain it even. To have a little movement to the left in it. Facing more of these than she'd like. You getting nervous just watching it, Roger? Starting to. Mm -hmm. She had this championship really the way the course was playing, and she's sort of, she still could win, but she's got to get her A game back. This falling apart a little like Nabisco. Going to lose her lead right here where she's lost it. Kung's still in trouble, though, so this really sets the stage for Brittany Lincecum potentially. Yeah, it does, but she's got a tough little one here down the hill. She oh, quit on it. Yeah. Easy to do when you got to hit it that easily. Boy, I'm telling you, people are falling apart right yeah. now. Back to 15. And Kung trying to hang on here at her third. This is easy to run this down into that trough. She doesn't watch out. And Johnny, not a good lie at all. I mean, the ball just wants to run down in this little trough, which is about 12 feet. Well, well to get it down in this area here, it runs away into that trough if she doesn't watch out. If she tries to keep from doing that, she could chunk it short. It's gone. Oh. It? Wow. A little check in that one. Really cool shot. Yeah, that, that was, ball came out. That was like a backhand tennis cut. Kung has a chance to stay at even. All right, Christy Kerr in with the bogey five at 13, now plus one. And Gary, that is her first time out of the lead since Friday afternoon. Again, she's been the second and third round leader, so a different feel now for Christy Kerr chasing instead of being chased. Move ahead to the 16th, and I.K. Kim second shot out of the left rough. It's 132 yards, good angle at this right hole location. Oh, well played shot that leaves a downhill ticklish left to right breaking putt. Back at 
13. PG for her birdie. All right. She's at plus two. Little two shot swing. Uh, it sure was, Johnny. This is getting very interesting. I'll say she's right back into it now. Move ahead to the 17th tee. And Sacone. And uh, hey, this was uh, this was a surprise to a lot of players. I don't think many uh, anticipated the use of this most no. forward of the three tees here. It was interesting. I, I talked with Karen Stupples after her round, and when she came to this tee box, she thought, well, this is kind of weird. But in retrospect, she said it was brilliant because if they used one of the other tees, you'd be hitting a seven iron in, a longer club in. You could play it off the ridge and feed it in. This way, you're forced to have to go at the flag stick to get it close. Well, after our meeting Wednesday afternoon with Mike Davis from the USGA, he mentioned uh, that he was thinking very strongly about doing this. I came out and took a look at this teeing ground. There was not a single divot taken from it. So none of the players played practice rounds from this tee. Haven't they gone up one tee every day? Uh, no, they never used the middle tee, John. Oh, they didn't? No. Okay. Well, this is a wedge for Brittany Lincecum. She just watched Suzanne Pedersen grip a nine and her ball hit into the ridge short of the hole. I think she's What's got a pretty birdie, Gary. I really do. Well, this is a golden opportunity here if it just releases forward. Well, certainly makeable from there. Over at 15. And as she lines up her par putt. We're going to take a look at Candy Kung's chip shot here. Notice how beautifully she keeps the face out or open. This is why the ball comes out like a rocket, but yet settled down so quickly. That ball came straight up. There was just a cool little like a backhand in tennis with the racket open. A lot of cut. Pops straight up, come down soft. Kong, sole leader, trying to stay there with his par. Can she make a good stroke under heavy pressure? Yeah. Yes, she can. Showed herself a little something there with that up and down. Got a little bit of a break off the tee with a decent lie, but then got a tough one up and down and leads by yeah, one. Yeah, you can see that was a very important pressure shot. She says, hey, I can do it. Three holes left for her. It's a 14 off the tee. Is Kerr now trailing? Well, this team moved up. I think this driver brings a lot of uh, not so good one, things right. into play. Well, Very good bounce. See, she's starting to hit some hooks now, and that ball's sitting down. 14 has turned the fifth toughest today. Just three birdies there. Christy Kerr, leader by two to start the day. Trails by one, and we've been showing you some of that brilliant slow-mo camera work at 7,000 frames a second on golf shots. What about popping a water balloon? That is good looking. Welcome back, I.K. Kim for birdie at 16. Downhill, left to right swinger. Who looks good. I.K. Kim to plus one. Within one of Candy Kung's lead. It's her third birdie in her last nine holes, so she's doing what you need to do, make some birdies. We go back to the tee, Candy Kung. Look at that wind whipping. Need a good drive. It's a birdie hole if you hit the fairway. That's looking a little right. Watching it anxiously. You don't want to hit it in these fairway bunkers. That's going to be well short. Wow. Didn't go very far. No, it's... that didn't. That's way back there and in the primary. Got a rough. Back at 14. And G. Coming off that birdie at 13 to get back in it at plus two, Roger. And 157 left of the hole from just off the edge of the fairway here. Good lie. Went back from the player's face. Not the best of angles with the whole cut back right. She's in the right rough. And while she looks at that, we head over to 17. And the birdie putt for Brittany Lincecum. This one's tough to read. Actually wants to scoot a little right early and come back left. Aiming pretty far right. Yeah. Good chance she'll miss this too far right. Yeah, you can see she was aiming too far right. She'll remain at plus three. We'll go 
Back to 14. And G has pulled a club. Well, the good news is uh, she's got the perfect shot shape uh, to hit it into this back right hole location. Well, she's already made two birdies on this week. I haven't seen too many balls close here. Well, she's got another club yeah, right in between. Roger. Well, as you say, Jen, uh, her shot shape would uh, benefit her here. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, I still think left of the hole is the, uh, the play from this angle. the lie and situation for Kerr, Roger. Well, a good lie, as good as you really could hope for here, uh, was perilously close to that creek running down the left-hand side of the fairway. And her preferred flight path is going to be blocked by overhanging limbs from a tree up ahead. Now, with that said, she can keep the ball underneath that, hit it across the creek and try to chase the ball in, and does have an angle at the flag, but not good. an easy shot. 143. Chew. 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 Stop. Chew. Stop. Finds it right up against the back edge. That's a tough fly right there. That's going to be a difficult. 17. IK Kim on the tee. Oh, and she's not hit the solid lights toward the front right part of the green. Oh, and that is going to leave a really tough putt as this green runs from front right to back left. Huge break from right to left and a lot of speed as well. As we go back to 16 and Candy Kong second. And very deep in the primary rough. All she can do is just hack it out to the fairway. Wow. That must have really been under to Yeah, I could hardly see it when I walked up the foot away. Uh, well, Candy Kong at even par holds a one shot lead over Christy Kerr and I.K. Kim Kong in a little bit of trouble at 16. Don't go anywhere. Is it Tiger Woods Woods so special? Yeah, it is with the right Anthony foot, Kim. right foot coming up and driving and. Ah! <laughs> Only those guys usually go out and over the top. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The Flamingo. Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. She did a good job of holding the face. Yeah, she did. You know, because that thing could have gone dead left. Yeah. Sort of a reverse pivot, huh? Old fashioned. Looks like Johnny Miller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's good. staying right there and turning. Yeah. That's the old stack and tilt. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. To a point. Nah, I was going to say. Too this is a little more upright than that stuff going on, too. Mm -hmm. Those guys are losing players yeah. left and right. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Badley's gone. Mike Weir's gone. And a look in slow mo at Candy Kung's motion on the last shot. Really on top of the ball. And Donnie, good delay there. Turns it down. And watch the right foot. Huh? She did a great job of using that part of the shot. Look at that ball. Pink flamingo there. That's right. A little. I'm not sure what you'd call that. I ballet. call it holding the club face open and hitting a heck of a good shot in the situation. Bad tee shot though. Short and crooked. Comes it even. Leader by herself for the moment. Curve face for the difficult uh, up and down here. Right up against that thick rough. I don't know if that's a putting it with a sand wedge or a, maybe a fairway wood, but she's got the sand wedge out. I guess it's not too bad right behind it. But that's a chunk lie, Roger. Well, you know, the difficult part about this, Johnny, is you have to alter your chipping stroke. You know, you're going to have to pick it up quicker. And you get so involved in technique that sometimes, A, it, it makes it hard to get the right speed in the ball. And two, it's going to try to, uh, or it's going to make it tough to make good contact. So uh, otherwise, this would not be that difficult to shot. It's going to go downhill, may try to move a little bit to the right. Isn't that easy to chunk, though? Well, she could, yeah. See how it's grabbing the club there? Well, she could pull it off, but you can't get too deep down in the roots. A little 
quick stab. It's got a lot of speed. That was a really quick movement, Dottie. Well, I've watched her play a few shots like that this week. It, that's her preferred technique. She did it from behind 18 a couple of times this week. The bottom facing a potential bogey again. Now back over to Kung. Yeah, who's uh, trying to figure out a way to make a par here at 16. Well, Gary, uh, facing shot 97. Eight paces on is the pin. What's the pin? Bottom of the bag. It's about a tree behind it to the backstop. It's a ridge behind the halfway. Okay. Added. So yes. If you did fly it a little bit past the flag, it should come back. Just don't want to hit a short on Gary with the exactly. spin. Exactly. Uh, short with the spin, Johnny, this thing could come back down 15, 20 yards back down the fairway. It's all shaved short of the green. You can tell that. Good full swing there. Get some of it backstop. Well, got it. Yeah. Now it needs to settle down. You see? Good shot. That was a nice shot. That was very well played. Right, good. Too much spin. Up at 17, difficult. Early putt here for I.K. Kim off Playing the top of the ridge. Playing at least six feet of break, yeah. right to left. Yeah. That Speed, may not uh, stay on the green. Uh, that's going to run right to the back fringe. Which is not far from the hole. Uh, it's 10 feet. Yeah. <laughs> Over at 14. And a long birdie look for Yoon Hee Ji. Tough to get it to the hole. She did it. Maybe gave it. Oh, yeah. Blast and it drops! back-to-back -back birdies. Out of nowhere after that terrible pimp hole. Gee whiz, is it plus one here? What a long birdie. And look, you've got three stacked in behind Kung, who's got a par putt left. So we could have four tied for the lead. Who knows? Along with G. She knew it was good the whole way. <laughs> She won the 2008 Wegmans in Rochester and says the second win will be validation. I don't think she was talking about a women's open. A U.S. women's open victory is more than validation. It shows you can handle unbelievable heat on well, Sunday. That shot she hit on the hole before was just absolutely as good as anybody's hit all day. And that putt there was probably the best putt she's ever made in her life. Yeah. All the momentum has just been all over the golf course and Kerr has been fighting the momentum the other way. It's been like an energy vacuum for for Christy. This basically the whole day Nares has gotten nothing going. She has been a student of Dr. Joseph Parent's book Zen Golf Master of the Mental Game trying to stay in the moment really credits that the past year for her success. This could be the US Open Championship for her. Try to stay in the moment here make a good stroke. One. To 17. And I.K. Kim's putt for par to remain at plus one straight back up the hill and she just jams it right in the back of the hole. <laughs> this young lady finished third in last year's Women's Open. As we go up to 18. Lincecum comes to the home hole at plus three. I think she just have to make birdie here at Hope. Look at this second shot, 122. Just turn it into a drive and a pitch. Yep, it's up 56 yards today, so. Team and Lindsay Combs give herself a chance to post plus two. Vulnerable with length, vulnerable with the hole location. Players get a good look at the hole because the tee's been moved up. Just a straight in putt almost from there. That's a wonderful spot. It's quick, but it's not an easy, not a hard putt to make. They are bunched up. Kung, Kerr, Kim, G. Linsa Combe could get to plus two. Well, before Candy putts for par here at the 16th, let's take a good look at the way she managed to get this ball to spin back. Contact first with the ball, then the turf. It has to happen in that sequence, and what a great shot that 
was. Great camera work. You see how stable, golf shot. how stable that club face was, how it tracked so squarely. No oscillation at all. That was nice. And Gary, how about the two third shots here that Kung has turned in the last two holes? You know, yeah. getting that other one to stop and pulling off that this one. Yeah, here. very impressive. And uh, anytime you talk to players, uh, about a U.S. Open and the way the golf course is set up, they will always tell you there are going to be times where you have to make hard working pars. She certainly was able to do it at the last hole. And she's got an opportunity to make another one here. And if she misses this, Gary, we've got four tied for the lead at plus one. Well, Danny, this would be an all-world par, that's for sure. Came out this morning, and uh, from this angle. It's a fairly straight putt. It's kind of deceiving. It really looks like it should break quite a bit from right to left. It's surprisingly straight. It is fairly slow. There's a back uphill. Give it about 10 feet, 12 feet. Got it. And here is G decision time here. Yeah, the hottest player on the course just going to put it right in front of the, you know, the face of that hill and just have a little wedge in there. Three players, one back of Kong, including G here. Okay. Uh, this is a good shot. She's playing great golf right now. That's just where you want to leave yourself probably a lob wedge where she can spin it, Dottie. Go to 18. Another one of those players at plus one. In Kyung Kim off the tee. 261 yards to take all of the bunkers down the left out of play. She has not done that. Man, just missed. She has bogeyed 18 each round. Okay. Back to 15. Christy Kerr talking things over with John Colleen. Yeah, you put it to that front. Okay. Grabbing the driver, and I think he uh, basically said, Oh, come on, just put it in down there for a wedge like you've been doing, knock it stiff. That's what she's doing. Her with that good score, four under, 15 through 17 here. See what she does here when it's all on the line. This we're hitting the back here, too. Right. Just, just barely right her ball. That was a lot of temptation for her. She could knock it on the green with the driver, no problem. But again, her strategy. Not going to stray. She was tempted. Hand was on the driver. Probably just out of four iron, I would imagine. At the most, it could even be five. Somebody's making a little noise over there. No big deal. It's an easy shot for her. Just got to concentrate. Part of that zen like thinking for Kerr is to stay away from the self sabotaging behavior that she says has creeped into her metal game in the past. So just. Regrouping here. Good. A little trap draw. That's a very bad. She didn't hit down on that. She she came up and picked it off the ground with no divot. That makes you hook it. To 17. Candy Kong getting ready with her T shot. 126 downhill and downwind. This is a 50 degree wedge. She could land at about 118, it'd be perfect. Somebody can make a hole in one here. Oh, bad mistake. Got a play to the right of the flag stick. So Candy Kong on the short par 317 is going to be left with a tough up and down from a very deep greenside bunker. If she's going to hang on to her one shot lead, we'll be right back. Beautiful, serene like setting here at Saucon Valley Country Club, but 
Boyer thinks heating up on the leaderboard. It could be all jumbled up here in just a moment. Kong has short-sided herself at the short par 3, 17th. Kerr's in the rough at 15. And Kung Kim playing 18. And this, while we were away, was a huge birdie putt for Lindsay Combe to get to plus two. Oh, dead straight putt. She pushed it. I mean, that was such an easy putt. Dead down the fall line. So Lindsay Combe will have that to post plus three. And back to Kerr at 15. It helps in up there to the weather. Yeah, we're going to stay just a little left. Yeah. By the way, Lincecum made her par. She's in at plus three. Liars. Leader in the clubhouse right now. Well, there are their backboards there, Rod. She put it behind the hole 12 feet without much danger in that little trough back there. And it's drawn a pretty decent line, 78 yards up there. there. Good. I mean, it is square groove. She can knock it stiff. That's a pretty good distance. That's a very good shot. So Curry will have a crack at her first birdie since the third hole. Her one and only birdie all day today. Over at the 18th, in Kyung Kim from the Bunker K. And this is not the shot that she was looking to have. Uh, she has drawn not the perfect lie. It's nestled down a little bit. She's close to the steep face. Any chance to get to the elite from the front? Yes, there is, because it's downwind. 144 front. Yeah, I think she was in between clubs and had to go with a more lofted shot. To 17. And Candy Kung eyeing a very difficult bunker shot. She has played the 17th and 18th holes in plus three so far this week. And made the mistake, Gary, you absolutely cannot make here. She has drawn a lie that uh, has a little bit of a clump of sand right behind. It's going to be almost impossible to get any kind of spin out of it. She's looking way to the right, Jane. She's going to try to utilize the slope. Yeah, there is a backdrop to the right beyond the hill. I'm surprised she went directly at it like that. Play it out to the right. Got a chance to use the slope. She was looking right, Gary. I know. I was surprised, Johnny, that it came out right at the hole because it's going to run away from there. Darner hit that flagstick, yeah, though. It was close. I hit one inch. Back to 15. And G in good position here. Hottest Flags player. Some pressure. The, hottest player on the course. Could be three birdies in a row. You should pull it. Back down in that little trough I've been telling you about. Oh, wow, it's not even going to get to the trough. Yeah, I'm surprised that it didn't come back more. G at plus one. Second one off the lead. MetLife Blimp Snoopy one providing today's aerial coverage. Visit MetLife.com to learn more about the Blimp programs. Well, what a pretty day, huh? Dottie, just wonderful. Had that one little bit of weather pass through here last night, but this this uh, week has been a nice payback for Beth Page. Well said. Okay, back down to the course at 18. Yep. In Kyung Kim has walked all the way up behind the hole here, gauging her next shot. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in this green, isn't there? This is not an easy shot by any means. I mean, one thing, if it was just a fairly flat green, uh, she got a pretty straightforward chip and run. But Johnny, it's all a matter of where she wants to land this, where she visualizes pitching this shot in. Is she going to land it about where she is, or is she going to take it all the way up to that second tier? You can see her shadows at the start of that dip, which is called uh, Biarritz. Um, just a little fancy name for that little dip. And um, she could hit short and go down through that dip, or she could hit in the bottom of the dip, or she could carry the dip. Thinking. Or she could kind of hit into the dip or into the hill and kill it a little and let it trickle up. I do believe in this situation you would hit the shot that has the least chance for the disaster factor. You put the ball on the ground quickly, get it to react like a putt, roll it through the valley. Well, you seen, could putt it. Seen some amazing things at the 72nd hole by Kim's and Women's Opens. Cherry Hills brings one of those examples to mind. But here is G for birdie and a share to Ty Kung. Not a huge amount of break here. Pretty 
Right straight will occur and turn. Yeah, good putt. That close to three birdies in a row, G will tap in, remain at plus one. We'll go to 17. Where Candy Kung faces this putt for par to maintain her lead. Candy Kim has uh, walked up to the green again at 18. Can't make up her mind. Yeah, that's a 20 year old taking her time, isn't it? Wow. Could she make another one a la Payne Stewart at Pinehurst with the finish she had and make it all those putts? Well, she's missed the last three greens in regulation. Can she make another all world par? It's going to break from left to right. She goes putting it up and through the green. That's not going to be enough. It's going to come back down into the valley. Last thing she wanted to do. Just mm. absolutely the last thing. It's a long way to putt. It's yeah. a long way. Well, it took out the chunk factor. Yeah, that's true at this yeah. time in the championship. But uh, you know. Chunk would ended up in the same place. Exactly. But uh, now one over is the mark four players tied for the lead at plus one. Christy Kerr for birdie at 15. Hasn't had one in a long, long time. Just not quite enough. Just a super birdie opportunity. Hit a poor tee shot and uh, almost made birdie though. Kerr stays at that plus one number. Looking for her second women's open title in the last three years. They are bunched up at plus one. And a reminder tonight, Christopher Lloyd, Jason Alexander, and Billy Campbell star in Meteor that comes tonight at 9, 8 central on NBC. And back over to 18. In Kyung Kim trying to post plus one and looks like she's going to take her time on this one. Well, if she had executed that, that putt from some seven, eight yards short of the green, she would have looked brilliant but as it is now this is a, a very very tough putt to make it was the classic opportunity to take a five iron a six iron a seven iron just bump it forward tumble it up the hill this is a very slow putt because she's got to hit it right into that face it might move a little right on huh? okay yep but it's definitely slow and did not give it enough it was going in or close to it but she can make that to take the clubhouse lead at plus two. That's not going to do it. Over at 16, Yoon Hee Ji off the tee. <laughs> tee shot cutting to the right side hey, of the stop. fairway, which should be fine. That's a birdie hole now, Gary. Yes, it is. If you get the ball in play off the tee, it will leave a shorter. Iron shot, a second shot up the hill. Perfect right. hole on the right for her cut. At 18. Candy Kong at plus one. Again, a hole that has been shortened by 56 yards. Wind is blowing from right to left. Candy's chosen a fairway medal. She's missed the last two fairways. I think she needs to birdie this hole, Jane. I think yeah. even par. Somebody's going to get to even par and win this championship. Absolutely. Good solid tee shot. Look at all the players performing right now. I mean, no one's been more clutch than Kong with some clutch par saves. She knew it started hitting some uh, this green in regulation. Yeah, well, but she hasn't Good. lost it when it looks like she might have. 16. Just a Kerr with less than a driver. Looking right. Uh, this is going to miss right, I believe. Can't hit the fairway yeah, she's in. She's only hit seven now of 13, so. She had a bunch of them left and now one right. Missed this one well left yesterday. Mm -hmm. Although that one appears to be sitting okay, but not gonna have a good angle at the right hole location. Up at 18. And I.K. Kim to post the plus two for bogey. Finished tied for third last year at Interlocking. Good U.S. Open type of player. Shot. It could be huge. 
We'll see how it all plays out as Ken bogeys 18 all four rounds. What is going to be the number today? Plus ones, top the leaderboard, Kerr, Kung, and G. Just a few holes left to decide it. Kerr, Kung, and G at plus one. And there's Kim in with that 70 today. Well, it's about the most pressure in all of women's sports trying to win this great championship. Maybe the most as prestigious as winning Wimbledon for in tennis for a woman. In this championship, and Donnie, you've talked about it throughout the years. I mean, you know, you can talk about the men. What's the most prestigious title? There's no doubt about it. This is the biggest one. It is. Um, I think you have a there's a battle. Um, in your personal preference, your personal feelings, whether it's at Augusta National or it's the U.S. Open or for European players, you would, they would almost always say the British Open. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but there is no there. question that this is the Come elite for the women's game. Right here. I'm, just, I'm looking at the lie with the five or the lie with the six. So you tell me how you feel. Unless you want to look down on the five. But. This is good. It's 40 to the point, but we're playing the one at 60, so. Talking about a six iron uphill, Gary. Yeah, that sounded like uh, what they decided on. Well, it's 150 yards, fellas, and uh, I would call the line mediocre. Uh, I think she can get enough club on it to get it up here, but it's not going to have any spin on it. It's kind of a knuckly looking line. How's well, you getting this close, Gary? What, one and ten? Uh, yeah, I think you really got to look left of the whole location. Just cannot afford to miss right. Agreed. Candy Kung's second. How about the emotions that have got to be running through this player right now? He finally holds an American passport and a chance I'll to win the national championship. To, that was a good aggressive swing. It sure was, but it's going to come, come on. back. Come on! Uh, I think it might stay. Mm. Yeah, goodbye. What a difference an inch makes. Uh -oh. This game of driving nuts. That could be huge. <laughs> yeah, that's a big difference. Now it's a very slow putt. 16. G second shot up the hill. And 142 left to the hole. And not the best angles from the right hand side. Doesn't seem to bother Maybe her most of the day. Aggressive. What's that, Doc? Doesn't seem to bother her most of the day. No, she had all that time. Yeah. Yeah. Just to slow it come back. Come back. Come back. Back. Come back. Come back. back. Here it comes. That was her right. hole location. Right. That cut right. of yeah. right. it stays up above the hole. That leaves a icy little left to right. Downhill breaking butt. Number one in Green's hit this week. She's hitting it better than anyone else. Well, she's come back so well after that double bogey at the 10th, too. May have heard a little roar a moment ago. This was Gene Reynolds for birdie at 17. And finally, something good for young Gene Reynolds. Her first birdie of the day, but first birdie in 24 holes. It's been a long one today, but yeah. she's still smiling. And a good story. A lot of people got to know her this week. Uh, Jean Reynolds, she took an alternative route from Georgia. Futures Tour dominant player. It's had a good week. And if you're interested in checking out next year's action at Storied Oakmont Country Club, you can get tickets by calling 1-877-281-OPEN or go to the website, U.S. Women's Open. Dot com and we showed you yesterday the sites they are tremendous venues going back to the Broadmoor after Oakmont next year and then Black Wolf Run Sabonic on Long Island that place is spectacular it is and Lancaster the last one there's a home and home match that's done each year between this club and Lancaster they're a little on the competitive side okay now to 16 Gary where it appears that uh, Kerr will be first to putt Raj Yes, Kerr uh, first to putt, and certainly the simpler of the two. Uphill, I think it'll move a little bit to her left, but uh, G's got a downhill little slider that I don't know if it's going to break quite as much as it might seem, but it will go that way. Roger, was that her best shot of the day, Kerr's? Might have been. 
might have been. It was a good solid shot from uh, a lie I considered iffy. And I thought Little Fortune landed just into the upslope short of the green, which killed its momentum. So underneath the hole here, this is where you want to putt from. Somebody's going to get the even par and win this championship. I really believe that, Gary. I just I, I got a feeling there's too many birdie holes. This is a birdie opportunity. 17 is a birdie opportunity. 18 is a birdie opportunity. Somebody's going to make one, maybe even two. Well, Christy birdied uh, his 16th hole in each of the first two rounds. Some good vibes here. I tell you, she's been battling her game today after three rounds of pretty much. Uh, Autopilot. Mm -hmm. This will tell you a lot, show you a lot about what Christy Kerr's made of if somehow she's able to gut this one out today. Well, she would look at this, I think, as the exact opposite of Pine Needles because she fought herself the entire championship until the last five holes there. This has been a flip of that. She says, I've won every way. I've come back. I've won with a lead. This would be a, another one to add to the list. Yourself. That was all nerves. That was def definitely nerves. And when you do that, you're thinking, wow, what's going on? At 18. Walking down the collar here. Kung at plus one. Former USC All-American. Again, we said she grew up in Southern California, but born in Taiwan. Well, this is slow and it kicks it right when it goes out of that dip. Almost that same putt we saw In Kyung Kim hit for par just a few minutes ago. Exactly. You talk about a comeback in the making here. Kung trailed by nine shots after two rounds, by five after three rounds, and she's got a chance. Well, it'll be Kerr, Kung, or G that'll make one of these putts in the next 35 minutes and hold the big silver trophy. None of them but Kerr has gotten it done before. While she putts for birdie, we got lower right G for birdie at 16. What a putt, biggest putt of her life, bottom right. Both are at plus one. Gave it too much out to the left. Wow. That was a good opportunity for G. Now Kung trying to move it to that even mark. Slow putt. So the question that Candy Kummer asked herself as she steps off 18 with plus one be good enough. Well, Christy Kerr just dodged two bullets, I can tell you that. 69. For the 27 year old former Trojan, the only player with subpar rounds the last two days on the weekend. That's Look great. At that. Coming back from that 77 on Friday. It's such relief at this point. Just like <laughs> tried my best, did good. I don't know if it's going to be enough, but that was pretty darn fun. She turned pro after her sophomore year of college at USC and just kind of big sigh of happiness and relief to see if plus one will hold up and can Kerr stay at that number at 16. She has left herself with a very testy putt. Just outside the hole just left edge firm. I think it depends on how you want to hit it Johnny if uh, you want to go ahead and try to hit it firmly then yeah I think you can probably keep it in the hole on the left side. I think at this stage wouldn't wouldn't that be the course you'd take Gary. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think I try to hit it in the hole and just be firm. Of course, if you do miss it hitting it from where you got a five footer coming back. That's true, but at this stage, yeah. you're trying to win the open.
right shoulder rocks up underneath. First three putt underneath. all week. What a three putt. Yeah. Really an ideal position below the hole. Now at plus two, forced to make a birdie. I'll tell you what, she is fired up now. She said enough of this. Just lost a little speed and it leaked to the right. I think it was a pretty good putt. It broke. Uh, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like she pushed it. No. All right. Short par 317th coming up next. It's a birdie hole. We've been 14 already this uh, final round. And Gary and Dottie and Johnny, this is a very, very tough one to call. You got Candy Kung in there, plus one. Johnny's been saying for a while here that he thinks uh, you got to get under par to, to win this championship. Uh, what do you think now and who do you think might end up on top? What I'm saying is somebody there are plus one plus one plus two. Somebody's got to get to even par. That's what I was saying. Somebody's got to make one birdie and boy Kerr she has got to be kicking herself big time right now because she has really played poorly the last couple hours. It's one of the worst rounds she's played under pressure but she's not out of it. You know she could finish birdie birdie no problem. Well, she could in those whole locations at, at 17 and 18, both are set up for that to happen. Uh, they were picked for this purpose, picked for excitement, and I think we may see that happen. So, you know, who knows? Maybe one of these players will do something historic, like a hole in one. It could happen. I'm there telling was you. one that was awfully close earlier today. <laughs> well, I mean, though, it's right down there where the ball wants to go. If he had a good shot on Gary, what, 12 feet right of the hole and it kicks left, spins left and rolls right in there. Yeah. That's uh, certainly the way the hole has been played uh, by those who have made birdie today. Take I mean, it. Candy Kung did just the one thing you can't do is go left because you can hit 20 feet right of the hole with spin with a little draw and it'll end up stiff. You can see that uh, UNEG has not played the hole particularly well. Bogey a double bogey the first two rounds. Take a look. This just a moment ago as Christy Kerr came up onto the tee. Yeah, I think she's a little fired up. I knew that it would fire that three putt, but that might be all right. Let it out and yeah. now go Absolutely. finish birdie birdie. Focus. Well, I don't know if she cuts her short irons, <laughs> Roger or Gary, but it surely isn't a necessarily a cut one. But you can aim right at the pin and cut it five feet right. That'd work. Pitching wedge here. No divot. It's not thin. thin. Well, this is thin toward the center of the green. Will it catch the slope? Oh, it's, no, it's going to just miss it. It's going to leave a super fast putt down the hill. That's why under pressure, Gary, one of the best thoughts you can have is just hit it flush. You know, to hit the thing flush. And we've seen two of those on 17 that just thin came out of them and uh, just one on just hit in the middle of the face. We used okay. to like to try to play a little bit of a knockdown yeah. shot. Get the ball back in your stance a little bit to make sure you did catch it solidly. Practice match. Yeah, that was a good Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to grip a little. It's 26. Take the down is 20 and without yeah, but the even wind. even pen high still comes down this way. So right. What you're working on then. It's helping. Helping from the right. You know, John Colleen's been in the middle of a meltdown way worse than this before. Um, he was I mean, caddying for I think it's probably one punch once Patty Sheehan when she lost what was okay. actually an eleven shot yeah, lead in Atlanta in ninety. Just inside the U. Can I split the difference? Yeah. It's just time to think clearly, look, think look slowly. Get back to what worked. Yeah, she got the madness out on Gary, and I think she's due for a great iron shot. She did go in the last hole from the rough, but she's been struggling. Pitching wedge. It's good. One time! We'll be back to the U.S. Women's Open in just a moment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Welcome back to the 64th playing of the U.S. Women's Open Championship. 
71st green. Mr. Kerr will be first to putt, Raj. She will. And uh, the putt that will come off a, a level over a ridge, running away and breaking left. How long does this putt carry? And Raj? Oh, I'm going to say it's uh, about 25 feet. Get any good vibes? Not really. You know, John, I, I really felt she needed to be fun with the putt the last night, and I thought, would have thought that might have been more aggressive with a pitching wedge in your hand and a shot behind with her tee shot here. And she just seems a little tentative to me, like she doesn't have a lot of confidence today. Well, this would change everything. So you could just get this one to go. Such a difficult putt, Johnny. You just have to match the line and the speed so perfectly. Those players have missed it high to the right. Sort of like that, huh? Yeah, as it gets down toward the hole, it almost straightens a little bit. Pretty shocked. Pretty shocked that those tee shots by these two terrific players were really pretty poor, to be honest with you, with a wedge. Roger, is uh, the line similar enough for G that uh, she may have learned a little something about the end of the putt? Well, she certainly learned something about the speed of the putt. It's on a a little different line. I don't know if it would have broken quite as much as Christie's to start with, but uh, I think she saw in the area of the cup that uh, there's not as much slope there as you might think. Boy, is she in a good spot if she can make this, Gary? I mean, this this probably is, is the open right here if she can make it. On by a little. Nervous time here, Raj. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be much break, I don't believe. Back up the hill. Just in case greens are pure, couldn't be any better. Just in case of making a read and making a stroke. I think too that both of these players have slowed down their entire process over the last four or five holes. I know for a fact Christie's gotten in trouble doing that in the past. Five on a perfect day, uh, the way she was playing the first three rounds. That was the feel. It was almost a foregone conclusion that Christy Kerr would uh, she back she, up with her second title in three years. She said she just wanted to shoot under par. That would have won or ran away with it, obviously, even one under. But we've seen it with great players now three times this week Ochoa in round two, Creamer yesterday. Now Christy Kerr, they're just completely out of their element. Okay. Plus two, one behind as she heads to the final tee. 72nd hole. And let's join Jane Crafter. 
And I'm here with Candy Kung, uh, the practice putting green, uh, getting ready for maybe a playoff. You're tied with uh, Yoon Hee Ji. Candy, your emotions as you stand here uh, on the cusp of perhaps winning US Open. It's uh, very exciting. Um, I've been dreaming about this day ever since I started playing golf. And, uh, you know, I went out there and played the best I can. Some putts went in and got some pretty good breaks out there. Um, overall, I just play consistent, stick to my game, and here I am. And you were five behind when the day started. Uh, you really played some quality golf, and your putting really improved over what you've been showing earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, I've been working on my putting a lot, as usual. Um, and I show up this week. Well, good time to do it. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you very much. Back to you, Dan. Thank you. And this final duo will tell the story, whether we're headed to the first three-hole aggregate playoff or if somebody can win this outright. The situation is G at plus one. Birdie can win it for her. Christy Kerr needs a birdie. And uh, see how uh, everybody finishes up here. G finishes up. That'll be key. It doesn't necessarily set up real well for a cut here, does it, Roger? I mean, really, when you look at it, Everything about this hole says hook. I mean, it's, uh, I think, an awkward, very awkward hole, driving hole for a fader. And hopefully not like her head cover, a duck hook. Did make birdie here in round one. I think this is an easier driving hole when they've left the tee boxes back. I was frankly pretty surprised to see him up this far. I think she's looking about right there, don't you think, Donnie? It would be 245 to cover on that line. 261 takes all of the bunkers out of play. Was that high, Roger? Okay. Well, we lost it, Joni. It was real high in the face, yeah, but it's in good shape. Yeah. Just a short iron to the green, really in a good position to make birdie. Downhill, downhill. Second birdie. Camera, should have a chance. It's um, 233, 233 past that bunker. Yeah, oh. There's been so eight birdies at 18 like today. Perfect. So it's been more doable on this yep. course that has been shortened in this 18th up 56 yards. Got the driver out. Got a good line right there. You see that white thing? Right there with the draw, I would think. It's good. Get the hole! Yeah! Let's go, Chris! Got separated again out to the right. Got to okay, though. Hit the upslope. Oh, that, looked, right. that looked like it didn't have a chance to get on the short grass. Hit that hill. Christy Kerr is fired up. G is a birdie away, perhaps, from winning the U.S. Women's Open. The U.S. Women's Open Championship is being brought to you by Lexus, the official vehicle of the U.S. Women's Open. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By ADT Security Services, always there. And by Franklin Templeton Investments, gain from our perspective. Final two players on the course here, the 64th U.S. Women's Open, both in the fairway. Kerr just ahead of Yoon Hee Ji, who needs a birdie to win it outright. Kerr needs a birdie to stay alive here. Candy Kung in at plus one. There have been some notable 72nd hole birdies in recent years in this Women's Open to win it. Birdie Kim, the most recent, Cherry Hills, and that spectacular bunker shot. Jenny Shasira, Porn 98, remember that, for Black Wolf Run. But it is, doesn't happen a lot, but that's what G needs to do to put it away. Well, these are very short tee shots for downhill, downwind. This ball only went about 232 yards, Roger. Um, and I think she missed it and skied it a little bit. And uh, of course, Christy wasn't too thrilled with her 240 yard shot either. And G has 167 left of the whole journey, pointing almost directly downwind. She can aim right at the tower and land it there just over that Via Ritz, and uh, it'll just trickle right down the hill. And, uh, you know, she's got the perfect flight for the shot. High fade. G trailed by three with six holes to play. Double bogey the 10th. 
But can she 13 and 14? Can she do it again to win it all? Yeah. Can she do it under pressure? Right at that. See the dark green between all the people. Left flag. It's a pretty good start. Let's see if it comes back. How's it look, Raj? Well, it's left to the hole, Johnny, and let's see if it can move to the right. That's uh, a pretty good pitch. That's, not bad. Yeah. Well, that's a possibility. One and three, maybe. Good shot. There was no gimme there. Another look at G's contact here. You see that legs first, hands second. And just really stays, keeps that face square a long time, doesn't she, Dottie? Certainly did and kept that right elbow in tight and then released it right at the ball for maximum extension. But that toe never turned over, it stayed square. All right, Kerr trying to cool down here with her second. Has to have a birdie to have a chance. Well, 160 left to hold ball. A little bit above her feet here. This will make it much harder to get this ball to fade toward the hole location where the green wants to run it. Will want to fly the opposite. I know, I'm just thinking of the up the line. Well, looking out the window right at her, she, her tower is right by her ball. And Got She's got two clubs, 60. which is not a good sign, Roger. But this is a frustrated golfer right now trying for a last minute heroic shot. And if it doesn't pull off, she is really going to be disappointed. Because she had this championship by the throat. I mean, it was hers. It's very high. Yep, come on, get up. Get up. She wants to go. Uh, it'll go back down into the swale. So much more difficult from down below there, but Kerr needs it. But Yoon Hee Ji will have a birdie putt to put away the 64th U.S. Women's Open when we come back. Yoon Hee Ji waiting for a chance to win the most prestigious championship in women's golf, but come. The fourth Korean to win it. Go back to back with NB Park, who won it last year. It's a birdie to get by Candy Kun, who's waiting for perhaps the first aggregate playoff in U.S. Women's Open history. But here's Kerr first to attempt a must make birdie. Has to have it to get to that plus one number. First, third time we've seen this putt, right? It is the third time we've seen it. It is slow. Uh, it starts wiggling left and then finishes moving in from toward the right. But biggest part of this, it is slow. Like I said, if this doesn't go in, she is really going to be distraught. There's, that's all the, the only word I can think of. Well, it's, it's the parts of her game that were so good for the first three days that have let her down the most. She's probably going to break about it. Almost a foot. Hit it firmly. Too hard. That was a perfect putt almost. You have to give her kudos for getting it there. That was, that was struck with authority, but Christy Kerr will come up short. That was actually one of the very best putts she hit all day. Again, the second and third round leader was in such a comfort zone. Everybody was ready to hand her the trophy, but not to be on this final round Sunday. So that clears the stage for Yoon Hee Ji. Roger going right, huh? This putt. That's the way I see it. Johnny's got to move that way. It's pretty good distance for a player that only stands five feet four inches tall. She credits her good distance uh, from her days of water skiing. Her father is the national water skiing coach in South Korea, and he, along with that entire area watching to see if Korea can make yet another statement worldwide in this game. This is quite a, a decision because you know if you're trying to make it it's probably going to go four to five feet past the hole uh, if it doesn't go in and you have to ask yourself 
Am I happy with just getting in a playoff? I'll throw it out to the left and let it sort of just do the bend because what's the odds of making this putt anyway? Roger one and 15. Even if you weren't nervous. It's it's a pretty good breaker to the right. I think I don't know. Maybe not. How much do you think it's going to go? Gosh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's got what eight inches or so. I think she'll hit it. I think she'll hit it softly and let it curl in all the Tiger Woods at Bay Hill. I think you hit it with 18. the pace that has been so good for you all week long. You don't do anything differently just because of this. None more crucial and none more clutch than this one. She throws it out there about 12 inches. And she's looking, it's looking good. Backed up just like Tiger did when he made his this year. Watch Fellow this. countrywoman, Birdie Kim, who had the dramatic birdie at Cherry Hills from the Another dramatic birdie for Korea. And Candy Kong over there on the putting green. That didn't sound good. Did she make it? It's like you gotta be kidding me. From above. You can see how much break from here. Didn't look like much from the other angle, but that's breaking at least a foot. G was looking for validation with a second win over here in the United States. She just picked up that validation times 10 in the biggest championship, the U.S. Women's Open. Now Christy Kerr finishing up for par to post plus two. Again had a two shot lead over G to start the day led by three with 14 holes to play just didn't have the automatic power type of game that she had displayed the first three rounds. 75 for Kerr. And she gives G a very sporting hug. And congratulations. Can't say enough about the way she bounced back from the way she started the back nine with that double. What a fighter. Wasn't exactly on the mark with the toss of the ball in the stands. But the previous ball tossed in the cup was the one that mattered most. Let's get down to Roger Malkin. Thank you, Dan. Congratulations. Thank you. Biggest putt of your life? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 I was extremely nervous before the last putt, and quite frankly, I, I'm still very nervous. Now, what were you thinking after you made double bogey at 10? Did you think your chances were over at that point? Uh, I was extremely disappointed with the double bogey there, uh, especially after making up ground, so much ground. But you know, after that, I made a couple birdies, and uh, you know, I, I got my I got my shot and feel back for the for the shots. Well, congratulations on the greatest victory of your life. Enjoy. Thank you. Back to you, Danny. Thank you, Roger. And Yoon Hee Ji stands atop the greatest leaderboard in all of women's golf. Final round 71. Good enough to catch Christy Kerr and pass her and hold off Candy Kung, who turns in a 69 to give Ji a run. So Kung in solo second. In Kyung Kum was the first to post plus two and another look at G with a birdie at the last. I mean, it's uh, 
Incredible to win this championship, Dottie, but to win it in that fashion, Hun Yi Ji with a birdie there. I mean, that's that's, mm. that's dreamlike. And for that country of South Korea, which watches uh, all of these championships very closely, even during the regular season, they got to be whooping it up there because this is <laughs> that was that was a huge putt for a huge win. That's exactly right. And you look at the women's British last year, the women's Open last year, and now these are three youngsters that can just flat play. And there are a lot more of those youngsters yet to come, and they they are all great champions and hard, hard workers. Well, G did something that was very rare. The last six holes, she played him in three under par. Uh, she played like a champion, and that putt she made there, I don't know where it came from. Like I said, it was like a 1 in 10 or 15 putt to make that and to just pour it right in there. Um, she she really played well. She led in greens and regulation for a lot of the championship. Uh, that high fade, again, U.S. Opens. Uh, you got young kids out there, high fades win U.S. Opens, and she's one of the only players in the field that can hit a high fade and watch this. And clutch butts. They always win. Win U.S. Opens as well. Congratulations to Yoon G. And a reminder that following today's tournament coverage, go to NBCSports.com for the Lexus wrap-up and a breakdown of all of today's action as well as exclusive videos, features, and analysis. It's all at NBCSports.com. Next Saturday, we head to Lake Tahoe where Michael Jordan, Ben Roethlisberger, Charles Barkley and company, and many more big-name stars take, play, take place in the Celebrity Golf Event of the Year, the American Century Championship, Saturday at 3 Eastern time on NBC. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, at your local news. Then starting at 8, 7 Central, the Great American Road Trip, followed by Merlin and the media for our entire NBC golf team here. You've been watching Golf's Best on NBC Sports. She is the winner. Thank you, Bill. Two main storylines here today, mm -hmm. Dottie and Johnny. First of all, uh, Yoon Hee Ji in this comeback, Dottie, after the double bogey at the 10th, just lights it up and plays three under golf down the uh, stretch to win it, and uh, none more important than the final one at the 72nd hole. Oh, it was an amazing 72nd uh, second hole, especially after missing her tee shot, the way she regathered herself, played the smart shot in. Uh, this is her second win, and the second time she has stared down other major champions to win. Suzanne Pedersen coming first last year in Rochester, and now Christy Kerr here. And another statement for oh. Korea. Eight Koreans finish in the top 16 in this championship. Mm -hmm. Johnny, the other storyline was huge. It was Christy Kerr trying mm -hmm. to hang on to the lead in this championship for another round. She had a two-shot lead, but uh, what happened to her today? Everybody expected her to lift that trophy. Well, she had the new attitude, sort of the zen type of control and uh, patience and the comfortable thinking. I was on the practice tee with her. She was very cordial and very open and feel, felt like she had it together. She was really trapping her irons all week, and today she just didn't turn it down. Uh, she must have been a little out of sync or whatever because that 75 came out of nowhere on a perfect day, perfect greens, uh, a day when 75 would be like a nightmare round, and for her to shoot that was uh, really not Christy Kerr. And, uh, boy, she's going to have a tough time sleeping tonight. And, Daddy, we had documented her uh, kind of coming apart a little bit, the Kraft Nabisco this mm -hmm. year, and then even last year in 2008 when she adopted that more of a zen-like uh, mm -hmm. attitude toward golf. So this is this is going to sting even more than those, I got a feeling. Yeah, yes. this, this will sting more. I think the Kraft Nabisco was more of a one-shot, out of nowhere sort of thing. This was a, just a slow, really painful walk today. I mean, she had to be looking at the people behind her, and she's thinking, I could beat these guys blindfolded, you know? It's not like Annika was there in her prime and some of the other players that were top players. They were players that had hardly won a tournament before. She had this championship. Okay. It was tough. What about Yoon Hee Ji? Does she have stain power? We've seen some Koreans win this championship and then just kind of, like, uh, fade away a little bit. What about her game, and what about her future? Well, I like the way she has won this championship. It wasn't her first. It was a validation of a really good win in Rochester last year against a quality field. I don't think this is the sort of thing where we're going to see one shot and, and be gone. You have this player f finished 15th on the money list last year and has had a good start to this year. I don't think we're we're going to be going, oh, where where mm -hmm. is she now? Well, I don't you, think so. You know, you look at her swing. She takes it up and she drops it in, the elbow right against her side, and then she keeps that face just going square, 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 and the ball just shoots up and then just drops a little right. It's... Uh, you know, again, if Ben Hogan was alive, he'd say that's the best player in the field. And she did. She was the best player. Number two in GIRs and number six in driving accuracy. All right, obviously a very disappointing day for Christy Kerr, and she is with Kay Cockrell.
Well, Christy, um, this was your open to win or to lose. You were two under, the only person under par, two shot lead. What what went wrong? What went different today? You know, I actually had a pretty good uh, warm up and uh, sometimes you just never know. I mean, it's disappointing, but you know what? I played my heart out. I made some, some putts when I had to. I just uh, probably should have read the putt on 16 myself, kind of messed my speed up a little bit. Um, having John in there, but that doesn't happen very often. So uh, just didn't hit Mary. You know, I hit like eight fairways. I gutted it out to hit 13 greens, and you know, I just I didn't putt well. So you know, she she played great down the stretch. I got to hand it to her. She played she played better than I did. When you won the Open last time, you didn't have to sleep on the lead. You were able to tee right up on Sunday. Right. Was it different this time, having all that time to think about what you could possibly do? Maybe, maybe not. You know, because you know at Pine Needles. You know, I still had four hours before I had to play the final round, so, you know, I still had plenty of time to think there. I just, you know, just uh, just didn't quite do the move I was kind of working on in practice. And, uh, you know, I hit some shots to the right, not by a lot, but enough to hit in the rough. I mean, you know, the first hole wasn't very good, as we saw, but, uh, you know, I tried. I tried my heart out, and you know what? I got to draw from this experience. It's disappointing, but, you know, the better person won today. Well, you certainly gave it a valiant effort with that putt at the last, thanks. and condolences that she didn't get it done today. But uh, thank you. thanks for taking the time. Thanks. Dan? Yes, thank you. Uh, obviously, very uh, tough day for Christy Kerr, but we appreciate her uh, talking with Kay Cockrell. Some final thoughts on the 64th uh, edition of this championship, Donnie? Well, I would have liked to have seen her take accountability of her own you know, situation at the 16th. That's a little disappointing, but I think she's she will learn from this. She'll take some positive stuff from it. She's going to have to work harder if she's going to adopt this uh, new philosophy because she got rattled. And the, the sticking power of that is that that doesn't happen. Much easier said than done. I got to give some kudos to the United States Golf Association. The setup was absolutely right it on. Was. It got exciting uh, today, one, didn't it? One over par wins the championship, uh, which is, uh, uh, it's, um, you know, just the even par. Even I'm par saying, with I'm the birdie. Sorry, yep. Forget the birdie there. <laughs> Our little board hadn't switched yet. Sorry about that. But uh, the bottom line is that's what the USG loves, even par. And they did a perfect job. It was good stuff. Dottie and Johnny, it's been yeah. a fun week here in eastern Pennsylvania. And on that note, we send it back to you, Bill.